So we talked about Twain being this American realist. Within our school, it's very diverse. We have students that live in um, different zip codes. So we, we have kids that, that drive an hour to get to school. We have kids that live around the corner. We have students from a variety of socioeconomic backgrounds, um, a variety of racial backgrounds, and they're all here because they are interested in challenging themselves, basically, and that they're willing to work hard. Some things that make this a good place for students, we set high expectations for the students and don't back down from them. One thing I see with so many students is they will rise to whatever challenge you set for them. If you set the bar low, that's as far as they will rise. You set a high expectation, they will rise to that. It's fully dissolved now, but when you initially added the ammonia, you should have seen a, a solid form briefly, and then it, go, it dissolves away. The ammonia is a base, so you're adding some hydroxide ion. The yeah. copper should precipitate as copper hydroxide, and then the complex ion forms, and it goes back into solution. One of the things that I like to think about sometimes is there's a, a biology chemistry teacher here who has a banner at the front of her room that says everyone learns here. You know, that's a key message for our school, not just the students, but also the teachers. Our teachers are amazing. They are experts in their field, they know their material, and they can convey it in a way that the students are excited to come to class. You will never find a basis student that walks out of one of his or her classes and says, oh, that was really boring. The teachers here, from what I see, they teach out of the box. They are not just using one method to teach the kids to learn something. I have two children at basis. Jacob and Paige would come home and tell me funny stories of what they, they learned this from their teacher. They are very close to their teachers. They seem to get the kids good scores and the kids have fun. Honestly, I think the thing that's special about BASIS is the culture that we've created. Please, let's, let's give a hand to our Commander Scholars for trimester two. We give an award every trimester for the student who, it's the blood, sweat, and tears award, for the student who just really struggled and struggled but pulled through and really worked at it and made it. They might not be an A student, they usually aren't, but they put in the hours every single day and the students see that we value that. We don't just value the student who gets straight A's by sailing through classes. That happens, but that's not most people. And we really appreciate the students who work on their homework very hard every night, go in and ask for help from their teachers. And even if they're getting a C in that class, we know that they have earned that C and we're really proud of them and we're really behind them. Our last category, our most improved students from trimester one and trimester two. We're gonna start with Kum Kumai Albargash, <laughs> Emma Longnecker, Aaron Mihan, Sheda Nasai, Galen Page, and Brandon Romero. We have great practices here, great support system. So we have a program called Academic Support when one adult meets once a week with a struggling kid and we talk about classes. And we talk about life. When you notice that a kid is declining in the performance, then sometimes when you have that conversation, then you realize that something is going on at home or et cetera. When I meet with new families, I tell them like, once you're, you're, you bring your student to us, we, then we're 100% committed in their, in their success. And, and it's true, we see every day. The expectations are high, but the teachers are really good about coming to us and helping us when they see we have a problem. And they just join in what we're doing. They don't stay in the classrooms when they have free time. They come and talk to us, and it's not, it doesn't always have to be about school stuff, but very often we can just come talk to them in the hallways, ask them questions, and they're more than willing to discuss. And they just sacrifice so much time to help us whenever we need them. One of the things that we also do to help motivate the students is we look at their readiness testing to come into BASIS. We do not require testing to enter our school, but we do over the summer before they enter our, our campuses, we ask them to just do some testing so that we know where their math levels are and their English, their writing skills are. And then we can identify those students and start working with them immediately so that no one falls through the cracks. Here's where things get complicated. I need the big radius. This is where everybody had trouble. Where would the big radius be, Shannon? Um, on the GX. Yes, more specifically, like from here all the way down here. Okay, here's where 
we had some oh. trouble. Yeah. I understand my mistake. Okay, what happened? One of the great strengths about our curriculum is it's a sort of a spiraled learning sort of an idea where every single homework assignment is a review of everything we've done before, which creates a really deep level of understanding because you don't learn one concept and then take a test on it and see it again at the final. You don't have six months between the last time you saw a concept and the most recent time you see it. We try to have a major component of hands-on lab work in all the grades. So they start doing lab experiments even in fifth grade. It's the hands-on lab work that really makes science fun. It's where you get to see things happen, where you get to watch the reactions take place, and, and that's, that's where the real science happens. At BASIS, we're really fortunate to have, first of all, an administration staff that is so supportive of the art department. We have two full-time art teachers for a school that really, population-wise, isn't that big. So that's huge. And I think it's important to have that creative outlet. We have very high expectations at this school, and the students know that, and it's no different in art. My suggestion would be that as you're drawing your hand and you're looking at it, instead of getting the entire outline done first, try to focus it finger by finger. Because then, see right now, it looks like the fingers are all at the same level, which they are here. Mm -hmm. But when you start kind of adding some of those yeah. wrinkles and lines and the shadow, it'll start coming together a little bit better. And This year I'm taking two AP courses, AP Psychology and AP Biology. It's a really light load. And um, I'm taking these capstone courses, which are the 12th grade courses, in English and um, French, differential equations and uh, chemistry. The senior capstone courses are a set of courses for specifically the, the senior class. The way the school is designed, students actually have enough credits to graduate after 11th grade, and so the entire 12th grade year is, is pretty much optional. The coursework they do in the, the senior year is more along the lines of a seminar course, closer to what they would get in college. It goes uh, more in-depth on specific topics. A lot of them, especially in the sciences, have a major component where the students design and do their own research project. And we have our fearless discussion leaders, Ms. Vina and Ms. Zaina. I'm gonna sit in the back and watch you guys do this and participate. Okay, so how to tell a story discussion questions. Getting everyone to the AP level, to succeed at the AP level, and so all of our 9th, 10th, and 11th graders take APs every year. The 12th graders are usually done with their APs, so just a handful of them might take it. And last year, um, of that group, all the 9th, 10th, and 11th graders, 92% scored at least one three, which I think is just incredible. I'm so incredibly proud of that, um, because I, just, I think it shows that we serve every, every child. If you're thinking about how we get there, especially for open enrollment, and we're drawing in average students from all over the city, first of all, we start in fifth grade, and that is absolutely crucial, because if we started in ninth grade, I just don't think we could do it. I think you have to start younger. I think that the middle school years are incredibly important. I think the first thing that the schools need to do is first to believe, to believe that every single kid can achieve. And then teachers, they also need to believe that they can make a change regardless of policies, regardless of whatever obstacles they have in front of them. They really need to believe that they can make, they, they can make a difference and that the students in that classroom can achieve. You have to have great tests. You have to focus on results. You have to reward teachers for doing well. You have to empower teachers. You have to build a community for the students. Uh, there's, there's no aspect that you can leave behind. Uh, it's not just rewarding teachers financially, for example. You can't just say that that's the magic bullet. It is also rewarding them by making them feel respected and welcome and that their opinions count. You can't just build a community for kids by putting up posters that are about character or having classes in leadership. It has to be in every single thing that they do in the school. It has to be in everything that the teacher says to them. It has to be in everything that I say to them. The faculty are amazing. I know that I would not be able to get through a day without them. When I feel overwhelmed, I can just go to my principal and, and really talk to him like I'm talking to one of my friends. And I can do that with a lot of teachers, and they give you so much time, and they really care about what they're learning about, and they care about their students. And I think that's what makes BASIS a, a real family, and I think I like that about BASIS the most.